How much gold is in this ring? To answer the question, here is a real ring, 14 carat, also scratched quite a bit, old ring. To answer this question, I have taken all kinds of measurements and we'll walk you through the calculation. You could determine the volume of this ring by dropping it into water and see how much the water level rises, but that has a fair amount of uncertainty or inaccuracy with it because it doesn't just fit into the smallest possible uh, graduated uh, cylinder so to figure out the volume of anything is in principle relatively straightforward you have to multiply its length by its area so first we're going to deal with the issue of length I'm just going to get these ones out of the picture the length of a ring here is some blue tack on my finger there you get the idea you have a length of metal or the goldsmith has a length of metal and uh, it sets it to a size and makes a ring out of it okay so the circumference of a ring is the length okay for this volume calculation I hope that's pretty straightforward and its area the area of its cross-section whatever shape the ring has okay so I made it I made this blue tack to look like a little bit like a ring so it's curved on one side and straight on another side I have better pictures than that so length starts here uh, yeah one thing at a time so like I said the length will be the same as circumference so circumference is diameter times pi but which diameter there is the with the green arrow I have an inside diameter of this ring that that seems to be a good start but it doesn't work for most metal fabricating especially piping trades piping trades work with the mean diameter or the uh, neutral diameter of things so you can see here there's a thickness to this ring which has also been measured here are some numbers my inside diameter is 20.5 millimeters that's the size of this ring and uh, I just put it on my ring finger there so it doesn't get brushed away and the thickness sorry and the thickness of this one here is 1.1 millimeter the black arrow here indicates uh, you can look at it either as a mean diameter which is halfway between the inside diameter and the outside diameter you can see it goes halfway through the thickness but that's not necessarily or most often it's, that's a mathematical mean that's not the line of uh, or neutral line or line of neutrality in the material where the that's a concept uh, meaning it's a line where the length of the material is the same rolled up as stretched out flat and it is typically at 60-40%, at so 40% away from the outside. So I worked with the 40% amount and I have this one. So diameter times pi is the length or the circumference of a ring. And uh, there is the diameter, there is my thickness. I worked with the, the, with the concept that's 60% away from the inside diameter and on both ends so the inside diameter had to be increased by 60% of the thickness here and 60% of the thickness here that's what you see here times pi mm, there is everything and that's the length of the ring 68.54 millimeters so I hope that seems reasonable for a starter that this ring is about 6 centimeter long when it when it starts okay so that's the easy part now the area I'm gonna have to cover up some of the calculations here so it's not a total distractor here we have an image of the ring a cross section of a ring a little better made than my uh, blue tech uh, imitation that's how the cross section looks like of course throughout the calculations I assumed a constant diameter inside and outside and a constant thickness which is never actually the case because these are hand polished turned or polished on a grinder whatever they deform so 
but uh, we'll go with a uh, mathematical perfection where thickness is even and uh, radius and diameters are also even and uniform throughout okay so just ignore little imperfections and scratches and whatever so on um, in this picture the thickness of the ring is marked with this letter a which is the altitude of this shape here this shape is a segment a circle segment okay so that's going to be the altitude of the circle segment and b is from the halfway point to the corner there is uh, because the width of the ring is five millimeters so that's going to be 2.5 mils so that's what i wrote there the next calculation is going to be identical to an arch calculation come on in a little closer because these numbers are smaller and there we go that's that's a better fill for the picture and when I have my calculations done so a is that number B is that number that's how you calculate with that so the radius of this ring or the radius of the cross section of this ring here is a picture coming up there okay so this radius here the radius of the cross section of this ring is that number 3.3 three millimeters everything is millimeters okay now that radius is going to be featured at two different spots and i have another picture for you yeah we'll do this picture first okay i'm just gonna turn these name tags name tag papers there okay you just ignore this picture on the left you don't really need it okay this ring the sur to calculate the surface area of this ring you can see how it's part of a bigger circle and uh, there is uh, two pieces of triangles here and to calculate so calculate the area of the segment you have to calculate the area of the whole circle and from it subtract the well, this empty area and then the two triangles and then you go and then you will be left with the area of the segment. Okay, you can also look at it just for show and tell. This way with uh, covering the numbers, this is the same as uh, depth of water in a pipe, you know, that's a, that's a pipe and there's some water in it and there's a width to the puddle and there's a depth to it. And Okay, so that's uh, piping trades and piping calculation, but this is the same idea here. So, here is my grand plan and I have some numbers on it but don't worry about the numbers here is the plan so the area of the segment equals you gonna have to calculate the area of the sector the sector would be just this teardrop shape the area of the sector minus the area of these triangles here okay I hope that makes sense and to get the area of the triangle for example or anything else you need this radius which we already calculated and we also need this height well we have an a square b square c square situation except these are not called a b and c these are called h b and r same idea so h square plus b square equals r square come on in a little closer maybe just give me a sec here maybe just like so you can see after subtracting and square rooting the height of this triangle here is 2.29 there are some more spare digits there and for this calculation the radius I used the radius from the previous calculation there where we calculated the uh, radius of this uh, arch okay so that's the height of this triangle there and uh, and in this and in this calculation here you can see how I work with the triangle I'm just gonna cover that one up the area of the triangle well I can make I can make one uh, rectangle out out of these two triangles so the area is B times H so there is B times H B is given that was two and a half here half the width of the ring and H which I just calculated there 2.29 plus change so there is that number okay now the area of the 
sector is coming up right about here. Sorry. The area of the sector is going to be delighting you with the trigonometry. There is the angle of turn for this triangle. That's a, that's a central angle in this circle or this ring. There is the opposite side and there is the adjacent side. The side adjacent to that angle and the side opposite to that angle. So opposite over adjacent, that's a tangent function. Except this is not O and that's not A, now it's B and H, whatever, same idea. So there is tangent function and when you calculate that angle you're going to get 47.47 degrees. You're going to have to double it because you have two of these triangles side by side, like so, for the angle of the sector. Okay, we need the sector angle. To get the sector angle I used ratio and proportion. And uh, because, sorry, when you double that, because you just need to double it, that's 95 degrees. To get the area, sorry, the area of this sector, I use ratio and proportion. The area of the sector is proportionate to the 95 degrees, its angle of turn, and the area of the full circle is proportionate to its full 360 degree turn. So, when you do your math like so, you'll end up with an area of that much for the sector. Going back to the segment, because the segment is just part of the sector from which we cut off this tri two double triangle part. There's the same 9.5 number from the previous slide and uh, I end up, when I do that math, I end up with an area of 3.8 square millimeters for the area of this cross-hatched cross segment. Okay? Once I have that, basically, basically, almost done. There, we'll go there. So, like I said, the volume of anything is the length times the area of its cross-section. The cross-section was 3.8. The length was from the first page 68 and a half, which was that number there. I worked with more digits, you can see, uh, for a most accurate calculation. So length times area equals 260.8 square millimeters. This is nice. Uh, I need cubic centimeters. There it is. Uh, shift the decimal the three places over from cubic millimeters to cubic centimeters. And there you have it. It's about a quarter of a cubic centimeter of gold to make this ring. And if I put it on the scale, which I also have, its mass is that number, 4.3 grams. Now, the stamp says on it that it's 14 point, uh, sorry, that it's 14 karat gold. And the density is calculated from this mass and dot volume, density, that's Greek rho mass over volume and if I crunch the numbers I end up with a density of 16.48 when I compare this to the standard density of 14 karat gold alloyed with copper I get pretty close to it the 14 karat gold density is 15 grams so it's close enough I did some more math it's actually this ring is uh, 16 and a half karat gold Close enough to 14, it is definitely not 18, but it's a little more than 14, or uh, or maybe it's got some metal heavier than copper in it to have it alloyed with gold, so there's the 100% pure gold density, there's the 100% pure copper's density, and uh, from those I calculated the 14 karat gold density. That concludes pretty much my calculations. How much gold is in it? Uh, if it's for, if it's about sixteen and a half carat, it's sixteen and a half out of twenty-four. So maybe sixty percent of that mass is gold. And then uh, whatever it's worth in today's market, you do the math for that. So that's how you can calculate the volume of a ring. It's pretty involved. It's it's got everything in it from uh, piping trades and metal fabricating trades and geometry of all kinds. 
trigonometry ratio and proportion. So, uh, you know, Pythagorean theorem here. So, that's how life goes in trades.